Voila. What is this? It's a wobbler. Two discs penetrating. And they do an odd thing on the surface, on a smooth surface. They wobble back and forward, rolling like a cylinder. There's something quite mathematical about it. I think it has to be something like root two times the radius or something for the distance between the centers. And then the center of gravity stays the same height above the surface all the time, and it rolls just like a, a cylinder would roll. So it'll stay there like rested, but if I give it a little push like this, get it started, it'll wobble that way, or it'll wobble at right angles, whichever. Nicely done. And they all do that, but um, there are some interesting designs of this product. I came across this originally in the mid-80s when Rick Flaherty, a very genial American who sadly died ten years ago, came up with a huge number of wobblers. It was his passion in life. One of the most interesting was this one here, made of a single piece of wire, bent so that the distance is that particular mathematical formula. And again on the surface it'll wobble very nicely that way. Or at right angles. On the very smooth surface, it goes a long way. There's quite a lot of inertia built up. The most glamorous thing ever did was this wonderful one here. It came with a beautiful pouch, which says on it, uh, "Well, you have to. It's, it's like a, a, a fortune teller. It'll, 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 it'll tell you an answer to, if you've got a question. It will say yes there, or it will say no, or it will say mm, now, or it will say mm, later. So I've got to say." Um, should I buy any more wobblers? Well, I'll try it this way. I said, the trouble is, I don't think it'll stop, so I need to have it on a surface where it'll stop. But I'll stop it there and it'll say something like later. I don't mind. But anyway, that's a very nice heavy metal one that Rick made way back in the 80s. His favourite one, which he made from thousands of them, was this one here where he filled in the distance between the rings and made a, a, a solid piece of plastic and he made thousands and thousands of these and these wobble beautifully. Let's go across the table like that. This one incidentally is luminous, no this one here is luminous plastic, that's right. That one will shine in the dark. But look at all the colours he made, all the different plastics. Great tubs of the stuff. Beautiful, very nice effect. So that was his, his final word on the wobbler. And I think he made a few of these metal ones too. This is just two washers, but if, you go, if you're precise about it and get them to work properly, it, it goes a long way considering how small it is. That certainly is probably the smallest wobbler I've got. I think it would actually work even smaller size. And when it comes to large wobblers, I did discover when I was studying these at, back at the time, that there was a, an artist who made one way back in the 80s, which was four foot diameter piece of the wood. So they called it a... They called it a rocking toy. I don't think it actually wobbled. It just stayed on the plinth and wobbled back and forward. But four foot diameter, that's a seriously large wobbler. I discovered some time ago that the, even the small, the toy market for small children includes the wobbler. This one is made by a Finnish company made out of birchwood, I think it is, which is a lovely light wood that they make a lot of these things out of in Italy, in, in Finland. What's nice about it, of course, is it's got smiley little faces, which would appeal to very small children. And the wood itself is very hygienic, so they can, they can mouse it as children would. Small. But that's a nice one. It works well, and yet it's the wobbler. The most exotic one I've ever come across is this one here by John Erdmark, who designed that wonderful helicone. It looks completely unlike a wobbler because he's taken out the instance of penetration of the thing, made ellipses, but he's got the right geometry. So the thing will actually elegantly, I'll do it this way first, will actually go across in a very elegant way. But clearly the way it's rolling, it's showing that the central gravity is staying the same height above the table all the time. But look at that. And this was made for the Gathering for Gardener about um, eight years ago, I think it was. Beautiful, slow motion one. The Germans came up with a lovely series of designs. The two best, I think, were one which we had on our website at one time. This one here, it was very expensive but very beautiful. And it was a, a condiment set in a smart dinner party. When someone says, will you pass a salt? You say, OK, coming over. Wobble, 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 wobble. Salt and pepper, would you believe? Yes, salt and pepper. Bit of salt there, bit of pepper there. Close it up, send it back over the table to the other guests and they can have a go themselves. <laughs> Lovely idea. And the latest one I've received is this one here, also a German company making them. Again, this wobbles nicely. And I think from the little slot in it, you can guess what its function is. But just in case you haven't got it, I shall use it. Lift up, lift up a cap. Clever stuff. That's a hard day's wobbling. 
So we'll have a go at putting them all out together on a line here and see if we can get a nice joint action. The family of wobblers doing their little action. The metal ones by the, from the Germans are very heavy, surprising but how much weight there is, but yet they work. That's the, the fascinating thing about it. So in the front we'll have the little babies, and in the back we'll have the big boys. And here's Rick's wonderful series of wobblers. Now we'll see if the whole family wants to perform all at the same time. Are you ready, boys? Here we go. Woof.